time I was a kid, I was always interested in music. My, there was a lot of music in my family. My father was a uh, lawyer, but an amateur jazz piano player, and uh, a huge Oscar Peterson fan. When we were, uh, when I was little, he had uh, about, uh, I think, 120 Oscar Peterson records. And you'd go when you, whenever I would go and come home, it would, they, you know, they used to, they, have, they, they had these things called records. You know, they were black and kind of round and made of vinyl, and. Um, he would put a stack of like 12 of them on this on this thing that would kind of and they would just fall and so it'd be like kind of Ray Brown walking from the time you came into the house till till the time until uh, well actually he would play them at night too when he was sleeping a lot so it was just it was just this constant background of that kind of music of course not just Oscar Peterson he was you know older than me as parents so often are and uh, he, he had come up in the swing era uh, he was a huge Nat King Cole fan and um, uh, he tended to like guitar and piano. Those were the two instruments that he was really into. And so there were huge holes in his collection. There was very little, there was no, I don't think he had a single Charlie Parker record or any of that, or Miles or any of that kind of thing. But what he really liked was this kind of mainstream jazz of the 50s and 60s, and especially pianists and guitarists. So Wes Montgomery and, um, you know, Jim Hall and Barney Kessel and just, uh, and for piano, really a wide range of all those piano players from that era, including some really obscure players, but um, uh, Tommy Flanagan and Hank Jones and uh, uh, Bill Evans, and so it was a very kind of mainstream jazz background um, in that one area that I was really exposed to. And uh, by the time I was starting to know more about music, you know, our taste would kind of diverge and I wanted to know more about Sonny Rollins and you know Charlie Parker and kind of the uh, Thelonious Monk sort of the my father was somebody who really liked the kind of masterful um, mainstream jazz interpretation of things maybe more than players who are sort of more innovative so his taste tended towards really round and and beautiful and perfect execution and, and uh, you know, that style of playing that Oscar Peterson kind of so exemplifies. But um, also, you know, incredible swing and, and blues and all that uh, was, was definitely part of the mix. So um, when I was 12, I started really getting into jazz. I'd been, I'd been playing some already and I was kind of dabbling. I was, I had a kind of, uh, checkered career coming up as a player where I would study some classical for a while and then go study jazz for a while and um, I was much more interested in jazz but I always felt like I should try and improve my classical playing to get more of a foundation which actually continued through, all the way through into my 20s I was kind of always going back and forth in that kind of way but um, but when I remember when I was 12 I started to get really serious with it and there were three people I really loved I loved Wes Montgomery I loved um, Ben Webster and I loved um, Oscar Peterson, and those were the three my three cats, and I just listened to them all the time, and mostly one record for each person. There was like, for Oscar Peterson, it was Canadiana Suite, which is a, actually an amazing record of his where he plays the music, it's not, I forget the composer's name who wrote the music, because he didn't actually write the tunes, uh, although he's often credited with them, because it's not very clear from the recording. But uh, anyway, that's a, a beautiful record, and, and still uh, one of my favorites for him. And I pretty much wore it out, and bought another one, and wore that one out, and uh, you know. Uh, so that's, that was my first real, uh, that's where I really started to get a little more serious about listening to the music. Mm -hmm.